Today I want to do a little discussion on uh, alternate ways of powering a power car. Uh, the same could be said for uh, power wheels, uh, little, um, cars uh, to change their drivetrains, and specifically talking about variable uh, frequency drives or variable rate drives uh, so that you're not always running one speed. Basically, a power car currently has a setup similar to this. When you step on the foot feed, it turns on the motor. Okay? thing is I have that connected to the wrong terminal so step on the foot feed turns on the motor full speed okay full speed is all you get that's your choice it's full speed or off there's nothing in between so it's either on or off okay and what we're looking at doing is getting a more variable speed allowed for a uh, drive system okay basically what I would like to work with is all wheelchair motors okay this is a wheelchair motor with the gear drive still attached. Okay, so let me go ahead and disconnect my power here before I get an electrical short. And let me get this out of the way. This one still has the gear drive. If you were to use something like this, you would want to drive directly to the wheel here, from here to the wheel. Otherwise, you've already got gear reduction in there. If you use the gear reduction of the pulley system in the jack shaft, uh, for the power car, it's going to be cutting you down to too slow of a speed. Um, the output of a regular power car coming from the pulley, it goes from a small pulley on the drive motor to a larger pulley on the jack shaft to smaller pulleys on the end of the jack shaft to larger pulleys that drive the rear wheels. So taking this, you'd want to drive directly to the rear wheel, not through the jack shaft assembly. Now what you can do is take this off of the gearbox and use it, but you got to be careful in how you do that. Some of them, as you can see from this one, the shaft is way too short. The shaft is way too short. Can't really use it for that. Okay. Here's one of that same motor, and you also see that they come equipped with these little electric brakes. These are 24 volt motor motor in a standard uh, use, and this little brake in here has to have 24 volts applied. To release the brake. There's a manual bypass on it, kick that lever and it manually bypasses it, but it's better just to remove the thing and get it gone all together. Okay, so this one here, back to this one again, this one has had the electric brake removed and the shaft is large enough and long enough to adhere a pulley to it. So this is what I've done here. Taken off the uh, motor itself, put a pulley on the end of it, and rigged up a way of getting it pivoted. Okay, I'll have to drill holes in this yet and put bushings in there and this will mount exactly where in the back side of the car the old one did and pivot and we'll have to be spring loaded on this side to hold tension back. Okay, but this gives us again our ability to run the car. Um, I'm going to hook this back up again. Do, 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 do. Just hook this to here. And hook this up over here. Okay, and then if I kick on the switch, all it does is straight to full power, okay? Well, we want to get rid of that. So in order to get rid of that, we use, uh, very, basically it's a variable frequency drive, but it's known as a PWM, or a pulse, pulse wave modulator. This is a pulse wave modulator. This is a pulse wave modulator. They're available on eBay and a number of other sources. Um, <clears throat> basically what they do is take this switch and kick it on and off, on and off, on and off, really fast speed. Old style systems for DC motor control would be to take the voltage and reduce it through a large resistor that would dissipate the remainder of the energy and heat. Um, by turning that switch on and off, on and off really fast, it doesn't have to dissipate the heat that uh, you would have had on the old systems. Uh, also, it gives full power to the motor whenever the switch is on. So it's full power every time it gets power, not 2 volts or 3 volts in order to regulate the speed. It gets the full 12 volts, or some of these will go uh, clear up to 40 volts automatic self-selecting. Okay, but this particular unit uh, goes to, um, let me get this hooked up here. This particular unit goes uh, all the way to uh, 40 volts with no switch. Now this particular one I'm connecting now, when I got it, it had a... Um, twisty style rheostat like this, a rotary rheostat, or potentiometer, excuse me, potentiometer, 
that controlled the speed on it. Uh, this is difficult to hook up to a gas pedal, so I took that off and I put this slide switch on here. Okay, so now let me go ahead and get my motor hooked up here. Uh, red lead, red lead, red lead to there. there this lead to here okay now as I turn on the juice my speed slowly ramps up basically I'll hook this into an accelerator pedal and as I kick it on and off I'll be able to vary my speed up and down now this drive uh, pulley here will go directly to the uh, drive pulley on the jack shaft this replaces the old Ford starter motor that's in the original system and I got full variable control now I can mess with my pulleys in order to vary my rate I can also change this to a 24 volt system rather than a 12 volt system to give me a little more oomph. I've uh, run the system like this at low speed for hours on end and it doesn't kill my battery pack. The motor remains cool. The power control units remains cool. Uh, so it's not really under a strain, but when I put a load on this that might change. So I might need to change to a 24 volt system, but with these it's very easy to do. Also, I've got some very low or very small gauge wire here for this test bed that I wouldn't want to use for my actual connections when I uh, hook it up. I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop the motor for right now and hook up the other speed control uh, so you can get an idea of how that works also. All right, I've switched over to this other uh, variable speed unit, basically just a little bit beefier unit. These are available in up to 100 amp service, and some of them even have reversing built in. Most of them don't, though, in the lower amp uh, ranges. Um, just basically turning the potentiometer increases my speed, and the motor takes off, and it's fully adjustable and variable. This also can be changed, this potentiometer can be changed to a slide-style potentiometer, like I had on the other unit here and that will allow it to work off more of a foot feed type setup and give you the adjustment and the variability you need to get a uh, full range of speeds out of your power car. Okay. Now, if it doesn't have built-in reversing on the uh, motor control itself, that's just a matter of putting in a toggle type switch that effectively reverses your polarity on your output. You do not want to reverse the polarity on your input into the boards because that will fry the boards. A lot of times it will just kill it. I don't know if you noticed the direction of rotation before, but that just re reversed it. Now, this switch is probably not heavy duty enough. It's good for 10 amps. Uh, there are switches like this that have uh, two more terminal connections over here and basically have uh, two positions for forward and reverse. You would basically just wire in your power output from your board into one side here, one side here, okay, positive there, negative there, then jumper leads from there to the other side, opposite side, so you're positive to here, positive to there, negative to here, negative up on this corner, and then this would be your output to your motor control itself. So as you change from forward to reverse, it would change your output polarity to your drive motor and allow you to get reverse on the vehicle. So. There's a number of different ways to do this. There's a number of different sizes. It's going to take some experimentation. Uh, as I get on with uh, this project and actually hook the thing to a vehicle, I'll get a chance to get an idea of how it functions and any changes I need to make. But that's where I'm at so far. I'm going to go ahead and hook a meter up here so we can maybe see what our output voltage is. Go ahead and turn that on. I don't know if you can see it there, but let's go ahead and vary it through the rate. It's showing 6.4 volts, 11 volts, 1258, 1256, 1255, just basically drawing down the power supply as we go. 1252, okay. These work very good to give you a variable speed drive for your power car. Uh, any questions, post them. I'll be trying to answer them as best I can. Thanks.